And today is an exciting day for our church because it is our Christmas in July service. So we're going to be seeing some Christmas music. So if you're a visitor here, we don't normally sing Christmas music all summer long or anything like that. But this is our emphasis today. We're going to have six ministries that are going to come up and give us, uh, give us an, goodness, I can't think of the word. Tell us what they're going to be doing during the holiday season, presentation, there we go. And uh, be telling us in ways that we can help. Because Christmas season is a time of year when people's minds are already thinking about Jesus Christ, thinking about his birth, and that opens the door for us to be a minister to them in their time where they're at. So in here in just a little while, we'll be hearing those presentations, and I want you to be praying even now of how you can serve, where you can serve, and we'll be giving you many opportunities in the coming days to serve and see God do something great with what you're doing. So would you stand with us as we read God's Word, as we read our Scripture? And uh, this is a wonderful portion of Scripture for today because God has blessed us in an amazing way. We've been given so much, but for what purpose? So let's read this together. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. We pray these things for ourselves. So that your ways may be known on earth, that your salvation may be known among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest, and God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. May God bless his word. This is his word for us today. Let's sing this song together, Joy to the World. We'll sing a couple verses, and then we'll get around and shake hands and greet each other this morning. Let's sing this together. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior let men their songs employ While fields and floods, rock seals and plain Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy Repeat, repeat the sounding joy Let's get around and greet each other. Make sure you greet our visitors today. We're glad you're here. sin and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings known, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace, and may the nations bloom, the glories of his righteousness, wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of his love. Amen. 
amen. As you're making your way back to your seats, we're going to sing this song, Come Behold the Wondrous Mystery. I love this song because it tells the story from birth to death and resurrection, his whole purpose for coming. So let's sing this song out together. Come Behold the Wondrous Mystery. Come behold the wondrous mystery in the dawning of the King. He the theme of heaven's praises, robed in frail humanity. In our longing, in our darkness, now the light of life has come. Look to Christ who condescended took on flesh to ransom us. Come behold the wondrous mystery, he the perfect Son of Man. In his living, in his suffering, never trace nor stain of sin. See the true and better Adam come to save the hell-bound man. Look to Christ, the sure fulfillment of the law in him we stand. Come behold the wondrous mystery Christ the Lord upon the tree in the stead of ruined sinners hangs the lamb in victory see the price of our redemption see the father's plan unfold bringing many sons to glory grace unmeasured love untold come behold the wondrous mystery slain by death the god of life but no grave could e'er constrain him praise the lord he is alive what a foretaste of deliverance how unwavering our hope christ in power resurrected as we will be when he comes what a foretaste of deliverance how unwavering our hope christ in power as we will be when he comes. <clears throat> Light of the world, treasure of heaven, brilliant like the stars in the wintry sky. Joy of the Father, reach through the darkness, shine across the earth, send the shadows to fly. Light of the world, from the beginning, the tragedy of time were no match for your love from great heights of glory you saw my story God you entered in and became one of us sing hallelujah
Father, we thank you for this time, this time of emphasis. And Lord, as we've sung these songs, worshiping you, Lord, drawing our minds towards the holiday season, I pray that as these ministries are presented here in just a few moments, Lord, that our hearts would be already thinking of and praying of where you can use us, where we can serve. And so, Lord, we thank you for this time together where we worship you. And Lord, we look forward to the time where we'll worship you in our service as well. Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see each and every one of you with us this morning. If you are visiting with us today, we certainly want to welcome you. And thank you for being a part of this service together today. You will notice uh, on the inside of your bulletin, you have a couple of inserts. One is our deacon nomination form and uh, we ask that you nominate at least seven uh, men to serve as our deacon and somebody has asked when do these have to be turned back in these do not have to be turned back in today uh, so if you want to take this home and give some thought and prayer hopefully you have been doing so and uh, but if you would nominate at least seven men to serve as deacon. Now, the other insert is kind of the agenda for this morning's service, Christmas in July. You'll be hearing all kinds of opportunities for you to be a spectator at some events, but you'll also be hearing of opportunities for you to be a participator. And so today is not just to let you know when but to let you know how you can be a part, we have sign-up sheets in the back for everyone that'll be sharing. And these are opportunities for you to be very much involved in uh, all that's going on in the life of our church. You'll notice that first on the list is John Camp. A little bit further down the list, you'll notice Sadie Camp. And then if you'll turn uh, your listening guide over, you'll see that Grady Camp is going to be sharing tonight. So if you hear that uh, Broadway is having a camp meeting, uh, you'll know where that gets started. But anyway, a lot of people are going to share with you about ways that you can be involved in our Christmas time. And, of course, you know, Christmas in July is something you hear not only just in church, uh, but we wanted to have a time to let you know this early in the year how you can start planning and 
preparing for the Christmas season. It is a very busy time of year around Christmas time, not only busy for families, but also busy for church. But thank you so much for being with us this morning. Uh, we're going to listen to John as he comes and shares with us about uh, our Thanksgiving meal. So welcome John as he comes. Good morning. So a little uh, little backstory. Um, Brother Kevin mentioned in the first service uh, about me calling him and, and asking, really, I'm just calling to make sure I'm not doing anything wrong in the church. <laughs> can, I, can we have Thanksgiving dinner is what I want to make sure. Um, but I think Brother Kevin, um, several, several years ago, maybe even 20 years ago, challenged Sunday school classes to, to come up with a mission project for each Sunday school class. And so um, Karen Gillock's Sunday school class decided that they would have a Thanksgiving Day dinner or lunch provided for anybody in the community that would like to come. So that's where this kind of got started. And, and when I moved back, Lori and I moved back um, home, um, I kind of participated in it and really just fell in love with that ministry. And I like to cook. So of course, this kind of just went in uh, along with what I like to do. And, and so I started helping Karen and, and the church. Um, and then somehow uh, we're, we're, we're going at least I don't know, Grady's 20, so we, I've been home 20 years, so at least 20 years. Um, so that's how long the ministry's been going on. So um, the idea here is, if you don't know, on Thanksgiving Day, we provide a free meal um, to anybody in the community that would like one. Um, so we, we, first off, you know, anybody in church that maybe is homebound or anything like that, we certainly want to minister to any families in our church. But anybody in the community that may not have a place to go that may not have a um, family to have Thanksgiving Day um, lunch with. We would love to give them the opportunity to have a good meal and um, maybe come in fellowship with us. So on Thanksgiving Day, um, we um, generally serve ham, um, dressing, sweet potato casserole, green beans, corn, um, roll, and some desserts. So if in, in the past, if you have participated, listen, I couldn't thank you enough because it takes... 20 pans of dressing to do that and and all the other food that that has to be made and prepared and brought up to church so um you have always been faithful and 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 help provide that so i can't thank you enough so um along with that um on that day we have to have uh workers in the kitchen we have to have people that that welcome people from the community in as they come and get their meal um, some people will come and eat we um that has kind of um the numbers for that have kind of um, gone down just because I think COVID has, has kind of changed how people interact and, and what they're willing to do. But um, most of our ministry is through uh, drive up and pick up of meals. So um, families know um, for 20 years, they've been coming and getting Thanksgiving day lunch at Broadway. So um, can't thank you enough for continuing that mission and, and helping us provide that. So if you would like to work in the kitchen, if you would like to um, maybe go out and knock on doors and, and see if anybody in, in, in the community would like a meal. We have a place for you. Um, if, you can, if you are a fantastic, um, uh, if you can make fantastic green beans, listen, we need all the help we can get. Um, I, I remember it. My, my memory is my grandmother and her dressing. And I just, my grandparents, they've passed away now, but I remember those things and, and how important it was, those memories and how, how food just brings me back to remembering um, my family and, and, and all those wonderful things God has blessed us with. So, um, so if, if you think about uh, any way that you would like to participate in October, um, there'll be a little thing in the, uh, a little page in your bulletin that will come out and it'll give you opportunities, ways to serve. I'll provide a QR code there and a, a web address that if you want to do that um, digitally, you can, or you can turn your form in um, on, in the bulletin. You can turn that in as well. So if you'd like to participate, we'd love to have you. We have a good time. Um, we just have a good time sharing, singing songs, whatever. Um, we'll try your sweet potato casserole if you bring it, because I can't make one. So the only way I get one is if I sample as they come in the door. So um, thank you uh, so much for um, helping provide this for the community.
Good morning, I'm Cherie Rains, and I've had the honor of heading up Backpacks of Blessings for the last several years. Um, for those of you that may not know what Backpacks is, is a food ministry where we send home um, food for our students at Plainview, Collinsville, and Henniger schools on the weekend and over school breaks. So this ministry that isn't just Christmas, and I thank Brother Kevin for giving us the opportunity to participate, even though we're not just Christmas-centered. Um, our, our ministry goes through the whole school year. Um, we send home a lunch, a breakfast, and a couple of snacks for every day that the kids are out of school. That's the weekends, that's school breaks, Christmas vacation, Thanksgiving um, vacation, and all of that. Last year, we had record numbers that participated. We had 187 students on those three schools. Um, it's the most we've ever had. Um, that broke down to, I did some math, and we last year it cost $197 per student for the school year to provide them food. And that's really not a lot in the scheme of things when you think about how much we spend eating out sometimes. Um, if we could save a little bit to help donate to the students, then um, that goes a long way for them. It's $1.85 per student per day um, is what we spend approximately. And I think those numbers will stay the same, if not go up this year with grocery prices the way they are. But um, it's a great opportunity to reach students um, we want them to be the best students that they can be. And it's hard to learn, it's hard to sit and pay attention in class when they're hungry. So we want to provide food so that they can be the best that they can be. Um, I shared this morning that um, I am so thankful to Backpacks for the opportunity that it provides me to spend time and minister alongside so many of you, so many in the early service that I don't get to spend time with otherwise. And so I just wanna encourage you this morning to find a ministry to plug into. Um, it's a great way to get to know others in our church um, as well as sharing the gospel. Thank you. Morning. I am Jake Chapman, and I am here to talk about Walk Through Bethlehem. Um, to explain it very simply, Walk Through Bethlehem, we tell a story. Um, the story we tell is is the greatest one that has ever been told. Uh, we invite people to come to our facility uh, free of charge. All you need is a reservation. Uh, we take them through a recreation of the city of Bethlehem. Uh, all throughout that journey, they hear of a, a coming Savior. Um, at the end of that journey, they, they see a baby in a manger. Um, we escort them to the drama where they are told the story of Jesus' life, his, his life, death, and resurrection. Um, just like Cherie said, uh, our missions is a way to get plugged into this church community. Um, what it does for you uh, is just as impactful as what it does for other people. Um, it's a way that, that we, we build camaraderie, we build fellowship. Uh, I've seen it do amazing things uh, in this church. Um, to get back to Bethlehem though, we've got a couple of things that we've changed. Uh, the way December kind of fell this year, we backed up Bethlehem one week. Uh, so it'll be the 13th, 14th, and 15th. Uh, Friday and Saturday will be 6 to 9.30. Um, Sunday will be 4.30 to 8. Uh, that can be found in your, in your bulletin. Um, the other thing we've changed is we now have a redesigned city. Uh, our goal with Walt Through Bethlehem is to, to spread the gospel to as many people as we can. Uh, and so to possibly spread it even more, we've made the city smaller and we've cut out some of the booths. I know that sounds odd, but bear with me. Um, 
if we make the city smaller and we change the path that people take through the city, we can keep the same Bethlehem feel of guards yelling, uh, people selling things, going through the synagogue, meeting the people in the house. It still has the same Bethlehem feel, but it'll require less cast to run it. Um, that brings me to next year. Uh, next year, I would like to propose that we add a Thursday and add a fourth day. Um, but what the smaller city will also allow us to do is to break up into two teams in the city. Uh, team one can handle Thursday and Friday and team two can handle Saturday and Sunday. Uh, this will hopefully allow us to reach more people uh, without adding more stress uh, to people's schedules. Um, Bethlehem to me has never been about numbers for numbers sake. Uh, it's been about spreading the gospel to as many people as we can. Um, like I said, it's the greatest story ever told. Uh, we get the privilege of, of telling it. Um, to further that point, I, I would like to share a story from, from last year that many of y'all heard, uh, but if you didn't, I, I wanna retell it. Uh, so on the last night of walk through Bethlehem before we went out to, uh, to start getting ready, uh, we gathered around for a prayer and, and Kelly Jackson wanted to let us know of something that had happened Saturday, um, the night before. Uh, she had a lady and her, chi her child uh, came in um, to go through the city and see the drama. And as they were waiting, Kelly was, Kelly was talking with her and she said that her son had told her that Jesus was God's son. And she asked Kelly if that is true. And Kelly proceeded to, to explain to her how, in fact, that is true. Jesus is God's son. Uh, it came time for them to go down, walk down to the city uh, to go through. And uh, so Kelly was kind of cut short, but she told the lady as she was leaving, uh, when you get to the drama, I want you to listen really closely and, and you will hear all about Jesus. She goes through, uh, Kelly continues doing what she does up here. And on that lady's way out, she stuck her head in the door and she said, you were right, Jesus is God's son. So I wanna fast forward earlier in that day. I don't know if y'all remember, but that Saturday we were forecasted to have a lot of severe weather. It was supposed to come in early afternoon and last the majority of the night. Um, I had been talking with Chase and Skeeter Logan all throughout the day trying to figure out what we wanted to do as far as having it. Was we gonna cancel it? Was we gonna postpone it? What was we gonna do? Uh, the timelines of when the storms was gonna come through was kind of meeting up right when we were supposed to start. Uh, we ultimately made the decision to just give it over to God. We decided if we were put under a tornado watch that we were gonna wrap it up. We were gonna get everybody home safely and we were not gonna have it. Um, do you believe God had a plan that night? Matter of fact, I don't even have to ask that question. The reason I know that you believe God had a plan that night is because not a single person that was a part of Bethlehem ever hesitated. Even with all the weather forecasts, all the weather that was coming through, how bad they said it was gonna get, not a single person hesitated to show up and spread the good news. And that woman and her child heard the gospel that night. Now in that instance, we get the privilege of hearing that seed getting planted. How many do we not hear about? Even with all these ministries, how many seeds get planted by what we do and we've not heard about it? To sum it all up, that is why I love this ministry. That is why I love all these ministries. That's why I urge you to plug into one, to get involved. We have sign up sheets in the back. We'd like for you to sign up as early as you can, um, get the spot you want and we look forward to working with you. And I just wanna tell you that I thank you so much for y'all's participation. 
It truly is an honor to work with y'all to spread the gospel. Good morning. So I'm not Sadie, um, <laughs> and I'm also not my mom, who is actually in charge of the Angel Tree Ministry, so I'm kind of the, the third choice this morning. But anyways, I'm excited this morning to have the opportunity to talk to all of y'all about the Angel Tree Ministry that we have here at Broadway. Um, and, and through this ministry, we really have the incredible opportunity to just take and, and take the ways that God has blessed us and just give those back to our community and, you know, as Justin was reading this morning in our scripture, like God doesn't bless us just so we can, we can keep that and keep it to ourselves. Like God blesses us for his glory. And through this ministry, we have the ability to take the gifts that we have in, in this church and all of our families and to just give back to our community in a way that shows other people the love of Jesus. Um, so last year, we were able to provide gifts for 79 families or 79 kids in 31 different families. Um, and for those kids, we're able to give them several items from their wish list for Christmas that year, as well as a Bible or a Bible storybook for some of the younger kids. Um, and again, this year we're anticipating having a similar number of kids or possibly even more who are in need of gifts this, this Christmas and whose families need our help as a church to come alongside them to help make their, their kids' Christmas special. Um, this past week, I was, I was reading through Luke and in between services, I was thinking about how Jesus talks about, you know, that, that parents want to give their, their children good gifts and God longs to give us gifts even more than that. And we really have an opportunity through this ministry to play into both of those things and to help these parents who might not have the means to give their kids these gifts, to bless their kids in that way. And also through that, just plant seeds through the Bibles that we're giving them. And there's also being the hands and feet of Jesus and, and planting those seeds that, and, you know, just trusting that Jesus will continue to to water those and grow those through this ministry. So the way Angel Tree works is the second week in November, we'll have trees set up on either side of the sanctuary with ornaments on them with little angels. And on those angels will be gifts that, that some kids have requested or Bibles. And so what you can do as a church is come and get those ornaments and purchase those gifts and bring them back to the church. But if you're not much of a shopper and would rather give monetarily, that was also super helpful. Um, and we can use that money to buy gifts for kids who, for things that may have been left on the tree or kids who come along later who we didn't have near the beginning that we still wanna be able to bless this Christmas. Um, yeah, after the gifts are returned, uh, we'll come together as a church with all the volunteers and package the gifts together and get them ready to give out to all the families. And about the second week in November, we will all come together again and then distribute those gifts to all the families. And so, we have a sign-up sheet in the back if you're interested in signing up to help, but really what I wanna ask from y'all right now is that you would just pray over the next few months for the ministry and, and all these ministries that have been mentioned here today. Um, but also just pray about maybe if God wants you to be involved in this ministry or the other ones that you've heard about. Um, and yeah, just that God would move this Christmas and God that, that God would use this church and that we as a church would be faithful uh, to whatever it is that he's calling us to. But yeah, thank you. Refreshing. The first service laughed at me, so. <laughs> My mission today is to bring two things to your attention. The first thing is December the 1st, the hanging of the green service. So if you will, mark your calendars for that because what we're going to do is have a gorgeous service that we've done in years past, but haven't done it recently, where we will have a beautiful service everyone being involved down to the tiniest child here or the oldest person here where we decorate the church as a as a unified group it's going to be a beautiful service and once we leave here the sanctuary will be absolutely stunning so if you will mark your calendar for december the first for that one it will be in the pm service okay on december the 8th it's our church christmas party so why am i dressed like this because Several years ago, after we went down and ate our fantastic meal where everybody brings something really good, 
we came up here and we were the live entertainment. We're bringing that back. So in about six weeks, someone is going to come around your Sunday school class with a basket of things. The teacher will randomly pick one out. Whatever that theme or song or era is, your class has to unify together and come up with ideas so that you can have your three to five minutes of fame up here as the entertainment. So it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. It's gonna be a whole lot of work and a whole lot of thought put into it, but use your imagination. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun. So mark your calendar, December the 8th, the church-wide Christmas party. Thank you. Just tell Jake and John, I don't know why, but this service like stresses me out. My hands are sweating. <laughs> so I'm Kelly and I'm going to speak to you about OCC. And that is an acronym that a lot of people know and some don't. It stands for Operation Christmas Child, which is a part of the Samaritan's Purse organization that provides for needs and disasters around the globe. And the mission of OCC is to demonstrate God's love in a tangible way to children in need around the world. Not only do the children receive this shoebox with toys and hygiene items and school supplies and fun things in them, they also participate in something called the Greatest Journey, which is kind of like a Bible school. So not only do they get the shoebox, they also get to hear about Jesus love and have the opportunity to accept him as their savior and spread that to their family and their neighborhoods. Since 2009, there have been 40.5 million children who participated in this program. 40.5 million. Now here's an even better number. 20.2 of those were saved. Well, if you think about 20.2 million and how that went out to their families and their communities, that's an awesome thing. And I, every year I have people say, that's not really my thing. Well, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> because the Great Commission tells us that we are to go and to tell, and we can't always go. We can't go to Africa and go get on a donkey or a camel and deliver a shoebox. But you can be the hands and feet of Christ here by packing that box and praying over that box and sending that box out. And we will be doing that again this year in November. So let me give you a little numbers about last year. Last year, there were 11.3 million shoe boxes packed and sent to 11 countries. And out of those 11.3 million, there were 2.9 million decisions made for Christ. 2.9 million. Now we sent out 300 boxes. We don't know if any of those 300 boxes went to one of those 2.9 million, but we have to believe that they did. And this year when we pack our 360 boxes, we're going up a little bit, we're going to pray over those boxes and we're going to pray that that box goes just to who it needs to go to. And we will do that the second Sunday in November. So we've still got a little ways to plan and get ready for that. And uh, the theme verse for OCC for this year, when I read it, I also thought how fitting this verse is for all of the ministries that you've heard about today. It's from 1 Chronicles 28, 20, and it says, Be strong and of good courage and do it. Do not fear or be dismayed, for the Lord God, my God, will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you until you have finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. And while I'm up here, Brother Kevin gave me permission, this is not on your agenda, but I don't normally get up and say a whole lot, and a lot of times it'll be weeks, some of you say, I've not seen you. Well, you can come find me real easily, but I need help. I need help in our sweet, precious little baby nursery. If all of our babies are here, which we are so, so blessed. I've always heard a quiet church is a dying church, we don't have that problem. If all of our babies are here, I have 10 babies from the age of one month to 18 months. I have 19 workers. 
that work in the baby nursery, just the baby nursery. So if you do the math, they're in there a lot. And I have the best workers on the face of the earth and I'm so, so grateful for them. But they wanna come to church too. So if I could add some more people to that rotation, then that would spread the love out. So if you love to hold babies or play with babies or feed babies or whatever, or could just stand it for one Sunday, please let me know because that, that is a ministry of our church. I'm not saying it's more important than everything else you've heard today, but it's probably more important than everything else you've heard today. So <laughs> please think about it, pray about it, but I'm, I'm serious. I need help. Thank you. Well, thank you for all that you do to help uh, help us have all these various ministries around the holiday time. Uh, especially, I want to thank you for what you do for our backpacks of blessings. Uh, we mentioned them today, but that's not just a Christmas time thing. Uh, that's an ongoing thing once school gets started. Uh, during our Sunday school time this morning, uh, we talked about... Uh, uh, mission trips and the whole service was about food and uh, you know the cooking of food and gathering around the table and that sort of thing and one of the men in our group had been on a mission trip and you know we're very much accustomed in our part of the world eating three meals a day and he said that uh, you know they stopped for meal time and they got to looking, and the people they were working with, you know, if they can eat one meal a day, they're having a very good day. And so it got to where when mealtime came around, uh, they simply didn't have a mealtime, simply because, you know, the people they were working around uh, were not sharing in a mealtime. And, you, you, you know, that sort of thing doesn't shock you when you start talking about uh, various parts of our world, but when you think about people right here around us, uh, and people in this area having food insecurities, uh, you know, it's very shocking, but it is true. There are children that are sent to school and, you know, uh, we want them to learn, we want them to focus, all these sort of things, but, uh, you know, if they're sitting there with an empty stomach, it's, it's a, quite a challenge for them. So there are all kinds of opportunities that are around us, uh, but the Backpacks of Blessings is something that goes on as long as the school year is going on. So anyway, thank you so much uh, for listening and being a part of this service today. Hopefully you have heard of things that you'd like to not only just participate and watch, uh, but you may want to actually participate in and be a part of the ministries that are going on there. It may be this morning that you've heard something uh, that God has used to challenge your heart, and maybe there's some decision that you want to make this morning. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior and Lord, we would love for you to do that before you leave this place today. If there's a decision on your heart, whatever God would have you to do, we want to have a time of invitation uh, where you can do as God leads you this morning. So we're going to pray together, and then we're going to stand. Uh, we're going to have a song. And as God speaks to your heart this morning, we hope that you'll come and uh, be obedient to him. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for every opportunity you give us to come into this place and worship you. And today we have heard of uh, various things around the holiday season where we can serve you and be a part of all that you desire to do, not only here in our own nation or here in our own area, but also around the world. And Father, I pray that you'll guide us into this time, help us over the next several months to prepare our hearts for uh, this wonderful season of the year, but I pray also that you'll help us to be aware of things that we can do right now 
to let people know about your great love. Thank you for loving us like you do. Thank you for loving every person around us. And I pray that you'll use us as your instruments to help people come to know Jesus and all that he's done for us. Uh, we pray now for those in this auditorium that may have never accepted Christ as their Savior and Lord. And I pray that your spirit would move through this place today and encourage us to uh, open our hearts and trust him. Thank you for this time of invitation. I pray you'll help us to be obedient to your spirit as he moves in our hearts now. We pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, we're going to stand together and sing this morning. As God speaks to your heart, you come. I'll meet you right here at the front. on earth and mercy mild god and sinners reconcile joyful all ye nations rise join the triumph of the skies with angelic hosts proclaim christ is born in bethlehem sing glory to the newborn king christ by highest heaven adored christ the everlasting lord late in time behold him come offspring of the virgin's womb veiled in flesh the godhead see hail incarnate deity pleased as men with men to dwell jesus our emmanuel hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king Thank you very much. You may be seated. Logan's coming to wrap us up with some announcements. And uh, thank you for being here today. Logan. Amen. If you haven't got a bulletin, please do so um, as you exit this morning. Um, a lot that we discussed today um, is in the bulletin, but um, just to kind of cover some points as well. Um, this uh, The deacon um, nomination form, again, is in there. It's a little booklet on the inside. It's got uh, some scripture. It's also got a, a list of our current deacons, um, those deacons and the 2024, 2025, and 2026. Um, those are deacons. You cannot nominate those, um, but you'll see some who have previously been ordained. Now, the list is not limited to those. It's also open um, to anyone who is a member of our church, has been, or um, any man that's a member of our church that has been a member for at least a year, um, and you'll see some of those um, standards that's in there for that as well as well as those who are not eligible um, for that um, take this home um, if you need time to pray over this we encourage that take it pray over it um, write down seven men um, who you would like to nominate um, as deacons and when you bring that back if you would just drop that in one of our offering boxes that would be incredible uh, if you have any questions you can contact uh, pastor for that he would love to talk to you about that um, also, um, the Save the Dates coming up. Don't forget um, Wednesday night for our kids. Our kids are continuing their summer of fun with our kids' color wars. That'll be uh, Wednesday, July 31st. And then uh, next Sunday, big important announcement for everybody. Next Sunday, we're only having one service. That one service will be at 10 a.m. No Sunday school, no nursery. We'll all be in here together um, hearing from some of our committees in our church. It's going to be a really important service. And then after we finish um, service that 
day, we're gonna go out, we're gonna pray around our educational building. And then from there, we are going to come back in and we're gonna have a church-wide potluck lunch. Um, so don't forget next Sunday, fix some food for you and also fix some food for another family. That way we have enough food for everyone to eat. The church will provide the drinks and the plates and the napkins and things like that. So we really just need you to bring food. Um, so thank you so much for that. Um, again, those dates for Walk Through Bethlehem are in the bulletin, December 13th, 14th, and 15th with the times. Jake will also be announcing um, when the work days will be. Um, that's something that he briefly talked on, I think. Work days are extremely fun. Um, we eat together, we have a good time together, and as we, are, as we build the city together, um, it's really, really a great time. So. Um, also, we have a new book in the church library. This book, me and Grady talk about every single week. It's my favorite book of all time. Thank you, Mr. Greg, for putting this one in our library, Something Needs to Change uh, by David Platt. If you have not read this book, I highly encourage you to go check this book out. Um, go buy it, read it, read it again, and then read it again after that. Incredible book will completely change the way you look at mission work um, and giving your life to the purpose of sharing the gospel with those who have no clue who Jesus is. Um, incredible book. Can't recommend it enough. Tonight, we also have a um, very, very uh, special service. Grady Camp will be sharing in our evening worship service at 6 p.m. in Faith Chapel about a current mission trip that he took to New York. So um, we would love to have you um, for that as well um, tonight at 6. Um, all right, cool. I think that's all of our information, Pastor. And we'll turn it back to you. I have some people I want to present to you this morning. Uh, let me get them to come stand up here with me if they would and Dylan is already a member of our church but let you know who he is Dylan Amber uh, Corlin and Lakeland and David Cole Colt uh, Parker they come this morning uh, some of them are coming to be baptized and we'll explain all of that to you a little bit later uh, what's the pleasure of the church on receiving them? All in favor, would you give us a hearty praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. That's our way of saying welcome to our church family. We're delighted to have every single one of you. Even you. He's a little shy. You all come by and welcome them this morning. And let them know how glad you are to have them as a part of our church family. Where is, are you through? Yes, you sir, I'm gonna pray, and then y'all just stay right there. After I get done praying, you guys come by, give them the right hand of fellowship, and then you guys will be dismissed after you help me and Scott McFall pick the chairs up. He's here this morning, so go shake his hand. So anyway, Father, you're good and you're holy. Thank you for all that you're doing in the life of our church. God, thank you that uh, we have so many things God, that our church is um, willing and able um, to participate in. Father, we ask you would continue to bless those ministries. You'd be able to provide for those ministries. Um, God, you'd be able to provide manpower for those ministries and challenge our church to get involved in everything that we do. Father, for the sole purpose to tell others about you, to share this gospel message. Father, whether that's working in the nursery with the babies or Father, whether that's on a work day, on a Saturday, um, in the middle of October, uh, Father, as we put a city together to be able to share the greatest story ever told, Father, I pray that would be the church's focus to share this gospel message. Father, we praise you for new members. We praise you, Jesus, for everything you're doing in the life of our church. We ask that, um, that you would just continue to work through us. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. <laughs>